like that's yeah. that's a really Usually. interesting observation yeah. because I see similar sort of problems like so ideally I'd like to have you know my main business I'd like to have more American clients um it's more tax efficient and and I actually think Americans so I do a lot of video Americans are much more open to video content in general right like they're ready to do it they're they're happy to uh, represent themselves and merchandise themselves and tell their story. And there's yep. no, there's no shyness or hum, like there's less humility. And I don't mean that in a negative way. They're just more open to selling what they've got. And I think that's a great mindset to have. However, you hit the nail on the head. Like if I go and try and sell to them in the same way I sell to British people, they get bored because they don't want to hear the story. They don't want to know where I've come from, why I do what I do. It's, hey pal, how much is this going to cost me? When can you get started and what do I get for my money, right? So it's a very direct, different, commercially led approach in, in America. I, I, I would say that uh, it's, um, it's a kind of a general rule because, you know, I know, I know many markets like I've been into the industrial tools, definitely feature driven only. Uh, really, guys don't care about uh, the price mm -hmm. in the beginning and in the end, also they do not. A certain point at a certain level or yeah, to, to, yeah, yeah. to some extent they don't care uh, they just want to buy a japanese machine and that's it but for example like right here when i'm here at pisotto which is um, a producer and uh distributor of dark food yeah uh, there is something with people changing dog food five times a year so you change from that to that that to that so in the end, they've got like, you know, an average time of uh, loyalty, like four months or so, or, or, or six. And, uh, and I cannot find out why would you change something that's so good? And I think, yeah, that's most likely maybe, maybe the customer market here uh, starts to be more like um, price and and benefit driven. Obviously, you know, we, we've had the large inflation stuff, you know, we're, yeah, we're feeling that everything so much more expense. But coming back to the um, UK market, uh, it is fascinating that Polish companies are so weak in the UK. Because, like, if you look at the uh, Polish economy, uh, I, I think that within the last 35 years, the Polish economy was up like four or five times, comparing to the U.S. being only 50% up, yep. right? So uh, Poland is the most, uh, within that time, Poland is the most uh, uh, quickly de developing country in the world. I think China is behind us. So it's been enormous what, uh, what has happened, and yet we know how to cooperate with many continental countries here yeah uh, but with uk yeah we like something so so i just thought that maybe that's a niche and maybe that's a thing worth talking about and uh i think and, uh, bringing good polish companies to to the uk to you know enrich your uh, supply chains i think that's absolutely fair and, and i think you make a really valid point in that um, there is some significant value for British companies working with Polish companies and, and vice versa. Um, I just do think also that there's a certain level, I'm going to call it arrogance. I don't think it's, it's meant in a, in the negative way that we take arrogance, right? I think there's an arrogance in English speaking people in general that we talk in a certain way and we expect all of the cultures to be able to accept that and move with that. And so I think there's probably a similar barrier going the other way from the UK to Poland in, or any other European country, particularly. I mean, you mentioned France, France being closed doors. Like I know my audience because of what I do, I'm predominantly English language focused because that's what the translation software understands best. That's where it's most accurate and it's a big enough market. I'm a, I'm a one man band essentially, but why would I want to do anything else? But for businesses that are growing, we kind of discount a lot of Europe because, oh, well, they speak a different language to us, so I'm not going to bother. And it's, it's interesting that, that mindset that you've got there. Like, I, I think there's some real scope for the people, but you're right. There's got to be an intermediary. There's got to be somebody in the middle that can understand one side, translate it and make, understand the culture of their target country and help them reach you know, those it's, people. It, it, it's funny because I, 
already knew that if you want to start a business in China, you have to have a representative in China, a yeah. Chinese person. So when you have your meetings, uh, you speak, they speak. And after the meeting, that, uh, that person in the middle tells who meant what <laughs> and what yeah. are the results. So, uh, yeah, and I've been doing that and it works really. And I cannot think of doing that uh, without an agency in China. Uh, actually, same with India, uh, because mm -hmm. this is also a direction where I'm interested in. And uh, from my perspective, yeah, you know, it's like um, there are some companies, some very good companies. Sometimes they're family companies, uh, you know, medium, medium, large, sometimes even small. Uh, where they don't have the perspective, you know, that it is possible to start working with somebody, let's say from the UK or Spain, they don't have this perspective and they are uh, looking for ways because our, you know, same like in Britain, some companies are uh, devoted to the local market and they get enormous revenue, great profits, fine. What's wrong? They don't have to know any language and they, they are just excellent workplaces. So I'm in to help those people to get to you, get to Phil, get to other guys you know, who really are locally based in the UK and to really tell him, can help. The thing is, I'm not the only one. Um, there are also various organizations in Poland who, who are meant to internationalize uh, companies. And I've been on such, on such trips and it was a great time because you meet a lot of people. So last year I've been in Spain and in Vigo. Uh, there were guys. Yeah. One guy was he was like from from a yacht shipyard, uh, and he he owns actually a yacht shipyard. He produces uh, yachts for uh, many people from uh, you know uh, Middle East, but he was totally never ever on a best trip in Europe. Uh, so it was his first time. Yeah. Like, and you know, that was an experience for him. Okay. He, so he knew well, he just had a look at other people, had a look at how it works, some exhibition. Uh, and, and I think, you know, you learn a lot by experience. So even if you're not well prepared, even if whatever, just start doing something.